Hi and welcome to Revised Chemistry with Mr B. In this video we're going to understand what chemical formulas mean and this is an important step on the way to being able to balance chemical equations. If you think you already know all about chemical formulas stay around to the end of the video so we can look at some more complicated examples. The formulas that we're going to look at are what's known as molecular formulas and molecular formulas tell you the number of atoms of each element that there are in one molecule of a substance. Now that sounds really complicated, but it's actually quite simple as we'll see in the first few examples. So the first example is the one we all know, H2O, the formula for water. And this means there's two atoms of hydrogen because there's a small two after hydrogen. Notice how the two's down at the bottom, not floating up at the top. And it also means there's one atom of oxygen. Now you'll notice we don't put a little one after the oxygen. If there's no numbers after the letter, it means there's only one of it. The second example is MgCl2. This means there's one atom of magnesium because there's no number after it and two atoms of chlorine, as we can see from the little two after chlorine. Notice how we can tell there's actually two elements in this, even though there's four letters, because each capital letter is the start of a new name. So Mg is all one element, magnesium, and Cl is all one element, which is chlorine. Here's some questions for you to try. The question is, for each of the following molecular formulas, say how many atoms of each element there are. So use your periodic table to look up the names of each element in the formula. First one is CuSO4. So there's three elements in that, as we can see there's three capital letters. So there's three names. NH3, so there's two elements in there to be looking for. And Na2O, so Na is one element and O is another. So pause the video, have a go on a scrap of paper and then mark your answers. So the answer to the first one is one copper atom, one sulfur atom and four oxygen atoms. The second one is one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. And the third one is two sodium atoms and one oxygen atom. And as we can see, a little reminder, if there's no number after the letters, it means there's just one of that type of atom. We're now going to consider some slightly more complicated examples that include brackets in the formula. So if the formula does contain brackets, everything inside the brackets is multiplied by the number outside the brackets. So let's see what that means. First one, CaOH2, the OH is in brackets and it's got two next to it. So that means there's one calcium atom, as there's no number after that. And there's two oxygen atoms and two hydrogen atoms because they're inside the brackets and they're both multiplied by two. You can think of it as CaOH, OH. So we can see we've multiplied the OH by two and we can now clearly see there's two oxygen atoms and two hydrogen atoms. Second example, MgNO3, 2, and the NO3 is inside the bracket, so that's multiplied by two. So we've got one magnesium atom, as there's no numbers after the Mg, and then we've got two nitrogen atoms and six oxygen atoms. If you're struggling to see where we get those numbers from, think of it like this. We've multiplied the NO3 by 2, so it's like saying MgNO3NO3. Hopefully it's now a little bit easier to see there's two nitrogens and six oxygen atoms. So the question is, for the following molecular formula, say how many atoms of each element there are. So have a go on a piece of paper and then check if you're correct. OK, let's see how you got on. So there's one aluminium atom, as there's nothing next to that. This time there's three oxygen atoms and three hydrogen atoms, because everything inside the brackets is multiplied by three this time. So if you're struggling, think of it like this, Al, and then we've got three lots of OH, and now we can clearly see the three oxygen atoms and the three hydrogen atoms. So now that you understand about molecular formulas, the next stage is to be able to balance symbol equations. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Thank you for watching. 